You're listening to Talking Guns with Joe. I am Joe Kroshanko, and tonight I have a special guest in the house, Lindsay, a.k.a. Lindsay Guns. How are you doing tonight, Lindsay? I'm doing awesome. Lindsay is a licensed, certified firearms instructor for Florida Concealed Carry and Aegis Tactical. We're going to get more into that later on. You going to be ready to talk about that later on? Absolutely. You do, you do a special class that we're going to talk about that not many places offer, not many instructors offer or can offer. Kind of have the niche on that market, huh? You have the niche on that. <laughs> so, listen, we're going to start talking today about some cool things going on and some weird things. First, we're going to talk about idiots in the news. And this is a hard one to decide which one was going to be the idiot of the week, but we found one. Um, it's pretty the- bad when it's hard to find a winner. It is. It's it's the scary part. Yeah. But there's never going to be a shortage of idiots out there. And we have a new law, or not a new law, a law in the service of the books that most people don't know about that you might want to know about, especially if you're into you know, buying, selling, and trading guns. Uh, you should know about this. Then we'll go over a little brief news. What's going on this past week? We're going to talk to you about a really new, cool uh, group out there, Gun Safe Florida. And then we're going to get into women's... G- Women's. Women, that's the jersey coming out of me. Women, guns, and training. I think this is going to be your specialty here, Lindsay. Pretty sure that's where I come in. So, you tell me when you're ready to do this now, Lindsay. You ready to start? Let's go. All righty. First and foremost, let's talk about this shooting that just happened in Sarasota recently this week. Um, Apparently, two Sarasota police officers were approaching a car, and that car decided to charge the police officers and actually ran over one of the officer's uh, feet or foot. Yep. Charge is a good word for it. Charge is a good word. And then the police officer shot at the uh, suspects in the car, hitting some of them. But the funny part was they actually drove themselves to the hospital. So they were pretty okay. Yes. The officers, we hope they have a a speedy recovery. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> good to the officer that actually they walked away from this. They're able to go home to their families. Um, one reason I, why I bring this up is as right after this happened, and you know, of course, it hits all the social media accounts, and people are lighting me up on that one. And I see on there what people are yelling and screaming about, and right away, people turning it into something it's not. Right. And who uh, would not shoot at, at a vehicle that's coming towards them? That's charging towards them. Yeah, Yeah, police officer's trying to do his job. They see a vehicle, it's suspicious, (laughs) sitting in the parking lot. They just walked up towards the vehicle. Now, all of a sudden, the vehicle takes off, accelerates to the high rate of speed in the direction of the police officers to run them over. You are saving your life at that point. Yes. At that point in time, you're driving a a 3,800-pound bullet going after the officer. Yes, I think they had the right to defend themselves in that situation. They shot into the vehicle. Uh, Two people were injured. One was not. Um, then the driver, um, the 18 year old, I'm looking, I'm I'm looking for his age. He was a football player. Where was he a football player at? I don't know. I believe he was a football player at Venice high school. Okay. Go figure. Um, if you would have saw some of these posts on the social media about this and right away it was into the black lives matter that no black people were safe to be in Sarasota. Not a race issue at all. Not a race issue at all. This is an idiot behind the wheel that tried to run over and hurt a police officer. Again, even not being a police officer, who is not going to shoot towards a car if you have the opportunity when a car is charging towards you? Yes. If you can't get out of the way. How else do you stop the car? Yeah. And, you know, police officers are trying to apprehend these people at this point in time. So that's just crazy. Um, Don't bring a car to a gunfight, folks. (laughs) Kudos to the officers over there at Sarasota for doing this. Um, now, another one that, we, that we're not a stranger to this one, and it's Bank of America. Um, Lindsay's over here shaking her head. <laughs> we know about Bank of America already, but for people that don't know, Bank of America said that they are no longer going to be uh, providing loans to manufacturers of firearms, military-style firearms that are going to be sold to the general public. So rifles. Rifles, basically. Right. AR-15. <laughs> um, you'd say AK-47s if right. they're manufactured here. To a point, you know, I always say, well, it's their business. They have a right to do what they want to do. However, people, this is a bank that's t- saying that for right now, we're not going to give loans out to these style people anymore. What happens next? They're going to tell you we're not going to give urge not style people, but businesses. Are they going to say next we're not going to give you a loan because... You know, to people that want to buy a Ford over a Chevy. It's total discrimination. 
Yeah, I mean, it's people should be up in arms over this. I know there's all kinds of rumors, and uh, the media is reporting that this is how the I'll say it, the lefts, lefties are trying to get their agenda passed. They're going to these private corporations like this that hold a lot of weight. I mean, Bank of America is a powerful business out there, and banks do play politics. Yeah. Let's let's be real. I believe it was uh, was it Citibank uh, are no longer going to be allowing. Uh, Small businesses they do business with, they're not going to run their credit cards or anything anymore if they sell firearms and offer the sell firearms to people under the age of 21. You know, in this state, we changed the law a couple months ago on all that. Um, you have to be 21 to buy everything now, which right. I'm sure they're going to change that again because it's just unconstitutional. But that's wrong. They're dictating now what small businesses can do. And I have a small business. Absolutely. You know, I'll give the plug, Aegis Tactical here in Lakewood Ranch. Um, we had this happen, A, right after Sandy Hook, if everybody remembers, if people came into our shop and they had a Bank of America debit card. Declining the sale. Bank of America would decline the sale. Yeah. The, the customer would actually have to call the bank up and say, hey, yes, I am purchasing a gun. And they would ask, are you buying a gun? The bank would ask these people, are right. they buying a gun? What's it? It's your money. Absolutely. What should they have any say? What you're going to do with it? None of their business. None whatsoever. Um, we had Deutsche Bank uh, a couple of years ago. We came into work. We started selling things. We go to run our first credit card for the day. Credit card machine's not working. Everything's coming back to client. We finally called the credit card processor up. They were e acquired by uh, Deutsche Bank. Deutsch, is that how you say that? I I might be saying it wrong. I've always wondered, to be honest. <laughs> I, can't even, I can't spell it, let alone say it. But anyway, they shut us down because they said they want nothing to do with the firearms industry. They're anti-gun. So they just shut down all the gun shops in the country that they did credit card processing for. Um, are they allowed to do that? No. But what am I going to do, hire attorneys? I can't afford to do that to go after right. a bank. They got a lot more money than I do. It's not worth it. I mean, we had a scramble like you wouldn't believe to get a new credit card company. And that day, for actually the next couple of days, we couldn't run any sales with a credit card. Everything was done with cash. That's so I got the bright idea to put an ATM machine in here. Hurts the small quick. business. Yeah, it does hurt the small businesses. And again, this, to me, this is the left's agenda. They can't get it passed through Congress. They can't do it the legal ways. This is the way they're going to do things. Uh, More business for the other banks. Yes. Now, that's a, we should be getting into a bank that specializes just in the firearms industry. We'd make... Good money, I think. Let's do it. <laughs> Anything else on the bank? Any more two cents there? No, that's it. No, I just, I left that bank, I can't tell you how long ago. Lindsay's over here shaking her head. <laughs> they can't see you shaking your head. She's putting they, her hand up and everything. Bank of America, yeah. They they really pulled one over on me at one point as well. So, you know, I've, I've been done with them for a long time. That's yeah. fine. And by the way, if you want to watch this, airing of the show uh, right after this airs it's going to be on our facebook page that's talking guns with joe and you'll be able to see the video and see the waving of the hands see on the radio <laughs> again yes i am from jersey and i sit on my hands because they usually are flying all over the place and i don't want to hit the mic i'm not from jersey i still talk with my hands yes so now we're going to talk about largo fake cops now this is usually I've seen it in the past a lot. It's usually a a trend. You'll get a couple of them happen right in the row, a um, bunch of copycats. But apparently a young lady was driving her car down the road and gets pulled over by what she thought was a police officer. I believe they had a red and blue light in the dashboard of the car. She pulls over. What I thought was weird in the situation was there was four people in the car, which is usually rare. So this guy gets out. You know, he's got his jacket on. Pants, he looks like a cop, he's wearing a hat that says police, pulls them over, and then he starts asking them all kinds of weird questions about uh, drugs and money. It's usually not the first thing they're going to ask you when they come up to your car. Yeah, no. <laughs> um, again, what I really think was weird, this guy was really brazen because there's four people in the car. Extremely bold. I think it was two women, two guys. <clears throat> um, Apparently, the guy's the guy walks back to his car. The fake cop walks back to his car. The two gentlemen that were in the car decided to get out because they thought something was weird. Uh, they approached the fake cop, and I guess he said something about his badge being in the back seat, whatever it was going to be. He sped off, got out of the area. They got a description of the car, a little description of the guy. They got a partial tag. But I think they're still looking for the guy. Listen, this is something that happens. 
people are sick. Sick people do sick things. It's scary. It really makes you wonder what he was really looking for. I mean, he was asking about drugs and... Drugs and money. So he's either a druggie or he thought that they were you know, drug dealers, whatever they could have been. I don't know. We're, we're not going to know until they catch him. But my thing is, even if you're a, a single woman or a woman in a car by herself driving down the road. Which would more likely be the target, actually. I Most mean, of the time when you see it, that's what it is. Right. What do you do in that situation? Let me tell you, honestly, I mean, I've been a concealed carrier for many years now. Um, we, we, we talked about me being a certified instructor. There's only been one time that I actually felt like I needed to get ready for a situation, and I was in my car. Yeah. It happens. It's a vulnerable place to be. But just remember, you are in a car. It's big and it's powerful, and just give it gas and go. But, you know, in a situation like that, I would recommend the people... Anybody out there, if you're listening, if you're driving down the road and something doesn't feel right and a police officer that you think might be a fake cop is trying to pull you over, listen, all you got to do is jump on your cell phone, dial 911, tell them who you are, where you're at, and you have a car trying to pull you over and you don't know if they're a real cop or not. First off, the dispatcher is going to be able to tell you if they're a police officer or not. And the officer in today's day and age, they're not going to get upset. You can tell them, hey... I'm going to pull over up here in the well-lit parking lot, whether it be, you know... Populated parking lot, shopping malls. I wouldn't look for just a Dunkin' Donuts either, because that might be insulting. I like donuts. I like donuts. <laughs> well, so you pull over into a well-lit parking lot. Even if you can't dial 911 at the time, pull over into a well-lit, populated parking lot where there's actually people there. That's going to help you a lot. Um, but there's no harm in you dialing 911 and say, hey, this is going on. Is this really a cop that's behind me? Because um, usually if it's an unmarked car, that should just... Raise a little flag to you. Right. I'm, I'm one, I actually wonder what the car looked like. I would like to get a look at that car. I believe they said Lincoln. I got the article here. Paint somewhere. colors. I mean. It was a dark blue Lincoln. Uh, the uh, idea that suspect what he looks like is orange license plate. I like that they talk about him being in a uniform. though. What was that movie where they, the fake cops? Which one? Where they dressed up as fake cops and they went around and had a good time. Oh, that movie was funny. Really funny movie. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it was pretty good. They didn't do any traffic stops. Listen, when we return, we're going to talk about this crazy law that they're, uh, they have here in Sarasota that you might be interested in listening to. Uh, we're going to talk about the idiot winner. We week. do have a winner. We do have a winner. I picked a winner in my eyes. Then we're going to talk about this new organization, Gun Safe Florida. It's a pretty cool thing that we got going on here. And then we're going to talk more women's guns and training. Women's. I do the women's thing again. <laughs> um, we'll be back shortly. Hey, welcome back. You're listening to Talking Guns with Joe. I am Joe, and I am joined tonight by Lindsay Guns. Say hi, Lindsay. Hello, everybody. Listen, if you missed miss the first segment of this show, you can always check it out on our Facebook page. That's Talking Guns with Joe. Our website, TalkingGunsWithJoe.com. It'll be on our Twitter. It's all the same thing, Talking Guns with Joe. It's pretty easy to figure out. So now we're going to get jump right into Idiots in the News. And before I get to the king idiot of the week, it was a tough choice, and usually I'm only going to pick one, but this time there was... And why I bring this up is, Lindsay, you work in a gun shop sometimes, part-time. I do, on the weekends. On the weekends. And you get all kinds of people to come in. And every one of them is an expert with firearms. It's good for entertainment. Yes. Um, (laughs) One of the scariest things I think you can say in a gun shop is when a person walks through the door and they pull their gun out. Absolutely. Oh, my goodness. I forgot about the one in the chamber. Yes. um, Yeah. We have a video place here. You know, you pull yours, we pull ours. That's pretty much what's going to happen. Um, I had what happened the other week. Uh, a gentleman came in, and he was actually holding a gun with his two fingers, you know, his thumb and his index finger, a revolver, and just holding it out in front of him, his arm totally extended. Um, he goes, I need your help here. At least that he announced himself right off the bat. Um, long story short, we'll maybe get into details about what was wrong with that gun later on. But listen, folks, you walk into a gun shop, just don't pull out your firearm. Ask what their protocol is. Say, hey, listen, I want to show you something, or hey, can you look at this for me? Most of the time here, yes, take it out very carefully. Keep your finger off the trigger, of course. Bring it in a case. Let us open the case. Yes. Well, we get people sometimes are actually carrying their gun on them as a concealed carry, and something just 
happened and they think there might be a problem, whatever it's going to be. But apparently down at Cape Coral at one of the shooting ranges down there, the guy walks in and pulls out his gun. for So he's buying, trying to buy ammo. So I guess he was pulling out his gun to figure out what kind of ammo he needed. Because he didn't know? That happens a lot. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> But as the shop kept telling him, no, don't pull out your gun, don't pull out your gun, please leave it in the holster, he pulls it out and bang. Luckily, nobody was hurt. It just went right into the floor. But come on, people. Don't be that guy. Common sense. Don't be that guy. Don't be that girl. Don't be anything. (laughs) When you walk into a gun shop, have a little gun shop etiquette. Absolutely. And ask them what their rules are. Again, we encourage people to carry guns when they come in here. We're selling guns. We specialize in personal protection. Absolutely. We want you to carry, but be responsible about it. And this guy was not. Uh, They had another accident uh, a couple days after that. We're not going to get into details because I really don't know the details at this point in time. It's still being investigated. Yes. Yeah. And we don't want to get into details. Let the... uh, Let the investigators do their job. Yes. I always say that. Before people, you know... You know, right away, everybody wants to jump to conclusions. Jump to conclusions on things. Thank you for filling in words there for me. I, I saw you were it's searching. The, I'm searching today. <laughs> for your knee jerk reactions and all this stuff, wait till the law enforcement officers, wait till whatever, do their investigations and all the details come out right. before you make your conclusion. So, but I did make a conclusion on this one already because this is my idiot of the week. So it's pretty open and shut. I feel like we should have a drum roll. Somehow. I think I said that last time we needed something. Well, apparently, Mr. Christopher Long, a 35-year-old male, was driving down Clark Road in Sarasota near Interstate 75 and decided he's going to start shooting his gun out of his truck window. Just randomly? Just... just I guess randomly. It hasn't come out yet exactly what he was doing. But apparently, he gets pull over. The cops finally find him. They pull him over and uh, he admits he lets the cops do a search of his vehicle. So what do they find? I'm dying to find out. You're dying. Well, first they found the rifle. Okay. They found the handgun. Okay. That's common. Uh, They found meth. Yeah, it is Florida after all. So It is Florida. (laughs) We have guns and vehicles. Uh, I guess it is Florida. They found meth in his vehicle. They found prescription drugs in his vehicles. They found drug paraphernalia. Um, Found all kinds of stuff in his vehicle. So to me, that's the idiot of the week. Let me tell you something. Meth, prescription drugs, a vehicle, and guns equals idiot of the week. Come on, people. It's It's a very scary combination. Yes. uh, This guy should definitely be. He's in jail right now. He he had a $35,000 bond, I think it was. uh, So he's going to sit in there for a little while. I mean, come on. He earned that. (laughs) And that's just, A, you don't shoot from a moving vehicle ever. There's no need for it. Um, What he did was reckless. Could have hurt anybody. Who knows where that round's going to end up. Right. You're in a moving vehicle. We talked about that before. Press the gas. Yeah. If there's a situation, press the gas. I think he was. I think he was too high to figure out what he was really yeah, doing. Yeah, he probably was. Read. Should not have been driving in the first place, much probably. less shooting a firearm well, out of the jail. vehicle. Where he belongs. Where he belongs. Maybe he, he should stay there for a while. I hope he does. <laughs> Crack his whack. whack meth, meth. Meth, is, meth is whack as meth well. <laughs> so, speaking of Sarasota. Now, this is a real confusing one. Um, I'm reading these articles this week and everything coming out of Tallahassee. And you know, everybody knows about this 2011 pre- uh, preemption law that they came out with, basically saying that local governments, your counties and cities, can't override any state laws pertaining to firearms. Little guys um, can't overrun the big guys. Yeah, they can't make any restrictor gun laws, That right? Yes, stricter. Okay, that, that's going to happen. Uh, tougher than the state laws. So, but however, when I'm reading the article, you go down there and there's a couple counties out there that already have some really weird laws on the books. I'm not going to go over the whole entire, everything that's in there, but there is on the books for Sarasota County, if it's a private gun sale, a background check must be done and there must be a three-day waiting period. For private sales. For private sales. That's a new one. Yes. Now, I know a lot of people out there that are buying guns. They might not like it, let's say. Or some people just have guns. They want to sell it because they need money, whatever it's going to be. They don't like the gun anymore. They want to buy something else. They do these private sales. My first gun purchase was a private sale, but it was from a police officer. So Yes. (laughs) And even then, at that point in time, 
it's CYOA, cover your own bill of rearrange. sale, something, whatever. Now in Sarasota, you got to go one extra step. Because when you really read into this law, look, look, for, look for my paper, you have, first off, everybody's like, no, no, it's a preemption law. The county can't say that. Well, yes, they can. Because in the Constitution of this state, it even states in there, the sale means a transfer of money or other valuable consideration for any firearm when any part of that transaction is conducted on property to which the public has the right of access. Now, there's more definitions in that anyway. But then there's also a section in here that says, the holder of a concealed weapons permit as prescribed by general law shall not be subject to this provision. So basically, if the person has a concealed weapons license, no, you don't have to do a background check. They're exempt. Yes. That's for a private sale. Private sale only. This is what people are calling the gun show loopholes. Yes. However, when you're reading there and getting into this, um, it's unique. Because the county and their ordinance is a little, it's uh, 86-1, uh, subsection B, and you go into all the different sections there. Um, any part of the transaction means any part of the sale, transaction included, but not limited to the offer of sale, the negotiations, the agreement to sell, the transfer of consideration, and the actual transfer of the firearm. Now, if it's all done within a private residence, right. not readily available to the public, that's perfectly fine. But now, if you did it in a parking lot of a convenience store or a major box chain store, you're committing a crime in Sarasota. It's just a misdemeanor. I think it's a $500 fine and up to 60 days in jail, but it is a crime. Pretty crazy. That's that's crazy. If you jumped across the line in Manatee County, they don't have that law or that ordinance. And let's be honest, for people that are in our area, it's really Minnesota. It's it's they're yeah, pretty they're synonymous. Kind of, <laughs> yes. But that's just crazy that they have it on there. My biggest question I put that on our Facebook page, who's gonna enforce this? Right. Who knows about it? We asked a few of our law enforcement officers in the area of Sarasota. They had no clue. We did a lot of searching. I mean, this is a very convoluted mess that somebody got into. But people, we got to start worrying about this because these are the politicians that we're electing in the office that are coming up with these things. And how long has this been on the books? This has been there for a while. And they're allowed to do it. And our police officers are not even aware of this. It's an ordinance. It's not something they're going to come across a lot. I mean, A, the big question is how are they going to know you're actually doing the transaction? Right. Not that I'm telling anybody to break the law or do anything like that. I mean, they literally have to catch you in the act. But maybe we'll have to get the gun lawyer involved in this or something like that. Because my biggest question I had is any part of the transactions, I mean, offering to sell or anything like that. Now, would a website, a social media page, like Facebook or something like that, Instagram, whatever it's going to be, somebody's offering to sell something, that's to the general public. Anybody would have access to it. Right. So now, right there, now you have to do a background check and a three-day wait on that firearm. For a private sale. Yes. No matter where you did the actual handing the gun over to the person. That's what I think. I could be wrong. I'm not an attorney. But there's a lot of questions about this, and I don't want Myself or anybody I know would be the first ones to get locked up for this and have to spend all the money for the attorneys because, let's face it, folks, the only one making money on this whole entire situation are the attorneys. <laughs> right. That's why you have to hire them. Um, when we return, we can talk a little bit more about this because I want to get into the concealed weapon part of that because there's a big thing right there that we could probably do a whole show on just on the concealed weapons aspect, the license of it. Um, that's run through the Department of Agriculture. Right. Um, so listen, when we return, we're going to talk more about that. Again, you're listening to Talking Guns with Joe. I am Joe. And tonight, my guest host is Lindsay. <laughs> we'll be back shortly. Hey, welcome back. You're listening to Talking Guns with Joe. I am Joe. And I am joined again tonight by Lindsay Guns. Hello. And, you know, Lindsay, we were just talking about this weird ordinance on the books in Sarasota, which is fine. The problem is, I think we were talking off air for a couple seconds there, is how would somebody know about this ordinance? Right. Ignorance is not an excuse. And that's why we're here trying to inform you on some of these things. And let me tell you, I've done a lot of 
uh, videos and talked about this a lot in the past. If you're going to sell a gun privately, I would just suggest, and you're allowed to do it, take it to your local gun shop, let them do a background check. Once the individual passes the background check and the transaction is going to take place, basically that gun shop takes that gun from your possession, puts it in their books, and this all happens in you know 10 minutes or so, puts it in their books, and then transfers it to that individual. That's purchasing it. You got I'd be able to sleep better at night if I did it that way, honestly. You I have mean, legal documentation of where that gun is, that you sold this gun or transferred this gun to this individual. To me, like you said, it's going to help me sleep at night. And this vigil is actually allowed to legally be in possession of a gun. How do you know otherwise? Yes, and that's a big thing. Well, they get into the concealed weapons license. Let's talk about that in a second again. Where a lot of this is coming up and where I was getting the questions from. This week uh, from the Facebook page, Talking Guns with Joe, um, an article that came out, and it's Florida cities and counties take aim at state gun laws. And it's all these little cities, which they don't, they can't legally do this. They're going after the state with this preemption law from 2011, basically saying that the cities and the counties can't come up with any tougher gun laws than the state already has. Then when you're reading there, there's seven counties. And I'll read them off to you real quick. It's Broward, Broward, Hillsborough, Miami-Dade, Palm Beach, Pinellas, Sarasota, and Volusia. They already have ordinances requiring background checks and waiting periods for private gun sales. So, yeah, again, Manatee is not in there. Manatee County is not in there. Again, that's adjacent to Sarasota County, and it's almost the same thing. But listen, if you're going to do a private sale... CYOA. If you're going to do it, make sure you're doing it the right way. You're following the ordinances and laws. And I would just suggest if you can, just take it to the local gun shop. Do it that way. Let the background check be done. Let them put it in their books. Then, And we get it happening a lot here where the ATF calls to trace a gun. And it's people that sold their gun to somebody. And we've had a couple incidences where, A, they couldn't remember who they sold it to. And they never did a bill of sale. Right. You got some questions to answer at that point in time. And that one, I'm not going to use his name, but I know he's listening right now. He had a whole ordeal where he was with the ATF, the FBI, and everything up in Tampa because of the sale. And luckily, he got all the information he needed. He even got photographs of the people. I mean, and typically, the ATF comes looking for that gun because it was used in a crime. So yes. they're wanting to know. Yes. And we, we get calls. Probably we got two or three of them this week alone. And it's you got to secure your firearms, folks. You got to secure them because people are stealing them left and right. Um, and some of them were actually from being sold. And they sold them to people that shouldn't have had guns. Right. So, but the reason this all came about is because these little cities and all that are trying to change these laws. And they're going after the state and they want to file lawsuits against the state, which I don't think are ever going to go anywhere. But, folks, we elect these people in the office. They are wasting your tax dollars to do this stuff. I don't think it's ever going to fly because at that point in time, as you're driving through the state, you would have to understand the different laws in each city or county. Right. Makes That's no sense. Crazy. Um, you know, certain this is over on the East Coast, too. They want to have a high capacity or large capacity magazine restrictions. And because they said that's the only thing that's ever used in mass shootings. Well, we know that's false right there. What do they consider large capacity? That was a question. But here's what they're trying to get it on because they are saying it's an option. It's a detachable device. It's an option, optional firearms accessory, which apparently that part of the law, they can actually make some changes or their own uh, regulations and ordinances on. Makes no sense because let's face it, folks, if you have a... AR-15, uh, Glock 17 or something, they're going to deem that a high-capacity mag. No, that's not an optional accessory. You need that for the <laughs> firearm to work. <laughs> right. Um, makes no sense to me. But remember, folks, you're electing these people into office. Uh, think about who you're voting for. That's where you get and, to voice your opinion. Yes. And we really got to be scared now, I think, in today's day and age, because I think we have both sides going after guns. In some instances, yes. So we got to be careful in what we're doing here. Slippery um, slope. It is. Now I'm going to get over the concealed weapons license part real quick. You know, again, with the private sales, just because a individual has a concealed weapons license does not mean that they can legally own or possess, purchase, 
whatever, a firearm. And this is crazy. The Division of Licensing, which is run by the Department of Agriculture, handles all the concealed weapons licenses in the state of Florida. Now, without getting into all the technical stuff with that, let's just say somebody gets their concealed weapons license and two years later, they become a felon. They get arrested. They go to jail for a year, whatever it's going to be. They still got that license they in their wallet. They still have that license in their wallet. <laughs> the state does not physically take it. Right. You want to know the biggest kicker? In seven years, because your license is good for seven years. Right. That person that is now a felon can actually renew their license online, and the state will issue it to them. Wait, what? Exactly, because they're not running another background check. That's crazy. It is crazy. So essentially, the person could be in jail, and they can renew their concealed weapons license. There needs to be um, more oversight on that. Yes. I mean, again, we could do a whole episode, I think, just on that. But I think that whole divisional licensing, licensing should be taken over by FDLE. That's just my opinion. I could be wrong. I'm sure I'll get some some heat on that one. What would the problem be in doing another background check upon renewal? I don't see anything wrong with that besides there be money involved and people go up in arms because they got to spend more money. Keeps us safer. I think you're right. I mean, what's I your life worth to you? We used to do gun shows at our shop. <laughs> um, I am not a huge fan of gun shows. Uh, if you want to go to the one, have at it, have fun. I'm not a big fan of doing the gun shows. Um, I've seen too many sketchy things happen at gun shows, and I don't want to say the loophole, but there is sketchy stuff that happens at some of these gun shows. Now, one of them I know, we had a gentleman come up, and I was a little upset at the time. I'll give you the whole story. We were down at the Fort Myers gun show. It was a slow show for us, and finally a gentleman comes up, and he's buying some high-end guns from us. I think it was three or four guns he was buying. So that was going to be a nice, okay, this is going to make the day a little bit better. Nice (laughs) coin. Still not going to pay for the show, because going to these shows is expensive for a dealer. But long story short, the individual, he's talking the whole time, bragging about how he just got his concealed weapons license. He moved down from another state, and he came back denied on his next check. So I told him he came back tonight. He goes, what? How can that be? Blah, 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 blah. Long story short, he calls up FDLE. Says there's got to be some kind of mistake. So he's pacing back and forth. He comes back a few minutes later and tells us he didn't realize his convictions and jail time from another state counted in the state of Florida. <laughs> they, they travel with you. They yes, follow folks, you. They travel with you. Your background uh, is your background. <laughs> and granted, he was a super nice guy. I still see him once in a while, which I'm not happy about. But he spent four years in prison. And he was trying to buy guns. And folks, he has a Florida concealed weapons license. Tell me that's not scary. It is. So that means he took a course. After the jail time. After the jail time, took a course. Because he just moved down after he got out of the jail. Took a concealed weapons class somewhere, applied to the state, did the fingerprints, did everything in the state, did a background check on the guy, and failed to realize that he was a felon. So they just missed that little they just piece missed of that. information. Now, the bad thing is he can't buy a gun from a licensed gun dealer, because guess what? They have to do a background check. As soon as they run the background check, it comes back in seconds, denied. And the gun dealer, we don't know why they're denied. We just know they got denied. Right. So he volunteered the information to me why he got denied. Fine. We lost the sale. We couldn't do it. But again, he was a nice guy. We shook hands. Everything was good. Have a nice day. I see him again a couple months later at another gun show. He comes up. Hey. Starts talking to me. And I see he has guns in his hand. Oh, dear God. (laughs) That he bought. And he's looking at me. I said, hey, did you get your situation? straightened out he goes no 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 but since i have my concealed weapons license i just buy off of private vendors private collectors and people trying to sell their guns at the show that's pretty brazen himself yes he knows he's not supposed to be doing it but he is but if you remember even under our florida constitution and what i just read with the uh ordinance in sarasota if they have the concealed weapons license for a private party transfer or Mm. sale no need to do the background no need to do a background or have the three-day wait. Pretty crazy. That's not right. No. So I think they just need to do a little change. I don't mind people not having to wait for their, if they have the concealed weapons license because they have a reason to buy the gun. They want to protect themselves. Um, I think maybe 
Department of Agriculture maybe shouldn't be running this. Maybe it should go through FDLE, an actual law enforcement agency. Right. But again, that's just my opinion. I agree with that opinion. Okay. Well, thank you. <laughs> At least one person does. I'm I'll back you up. Over that one. Uh, last time I did a video on private party sales and all that, I mean, all kinds of heat. People yelling at me. But I'm used to it. I'm a big boy. I can handle it. Now I want to talk about something really cool. And I'm actually a part of this. And this is actually Gun Safe Florida, Inc. And just to let you know right off the bat, this is a 501c3 not-for-profit organization. Now, what's it all about? Gun Safe Florida is dedicated to the reduction of firearms-related injuries and deaths from accidental or negligent contact with a firearm. Uh, we feel the most important parts and factors to address in all this is A, training, lack of training, and people's lack of storing their firearms or keeping them out of, or keeping them away from people or not accessible to people that shouldn't be touching the firearms. Right. Children. Oh, yeah, I mean, definitely. You know, over the holiday times this past year, how many kids got hurt and killed in this area? One would be too many, but there was a few. And most of the time, it was from a negligent parent, adult, that just left a loaded firearm laying around. Accessible to a child. Yes. So, hence, that's why you have Gun Safe Florida now. Um, this is going to be an organization that they're going to be collecting donations from businesses, private individuals, and they're actually going to be providing select shops. And this is right now, it's starting off in Sarasota, Manatee County, but they are going to be giving safes away for free. When you purchase a firearm from select dealers through the two counties, you'll get a free safe. That's awesome. Um, they're also going to have stuff on their Facebook page. And again, that's Gun Safe Florida where you can win free safes. Uh, basically, give them a story why you need one. They will provide you with a free safe. Now, it doesn't stop right there. They're also going to be providing training with some of these donations, and they'll get some instructors to donate some time, too, for certain things. They're going to be giving free firearm safety training courses and concealed weapons classes to make sure people are actually learning how to properly handle a firearm. Right. So to me, I think it's incredible. I'm proud to be a part of this. I'm proud they came up to me and said, hey, can you help us out with this? Um, they're going to make sure the classes, when they're being taught, they're actually going to vet the instructors. Um, they're going to make sure they're experienced and certified instructors. Uh, we can talk later on, <laughs> Lindsay, about that, some of the other instructors that we run into nowadays. <laughs> but they're going to make sure you're going to get the best possible training to make sure that you are safe. Right. With well, using the firearm, handling the firearm, and storing the firearm. One of the things I say in my class, you know, you'll, you'll never hear me say accidental discharge. There really is not an accidental discharge. You did something to make that happen. Well, if you never touched a gun before, maybe accidental. If you didn't know it was loaded. Yeah. If you don't have proper training. Yes. Right. But once you learn about guns or you claim to know about guns, it's negligent all the way. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. Agreed. That's what I said. So this is going to be a really cool organization. If you want to get involved in it, you want to make donations or anything, again, it's a IRS 501c3 private foundation. Nobody's making money on this. All the money goes back to just helping out the community. Let's face it, they're helping us gun owners, uh, Second Amendment advocates to keep us out of the paper for doing bad things. Right. Help us keep in a good rep. Yeah, we're going to keep a good <laughs> rep going. So kudos to these guys and ladies that are doing this organization. Um, if you want to be a part of it, you want to make a donation, again, you can go to their website, gunsafeflorida.com. It's actually gunsafefl.com or go right to their Facebook page, gunsafefl. And you can make donations through there, read a little bit more about it. Again, it is new. They keep posting stuff. And talking about things, it is new, but if you want to get involved, I'm sure they can use the extra hand. It's definitely something I could get behind. Yeah, definitely going to be a good one right there. And now we're going to start talking about what Lindsay's here for, her specialty <laughs> that most people don't know about. And I'll give you a quick rundown. Again, it's no, I'm not trying to hide anything. I do own a gun shop. I do own the training place, Aegis Tactical, right here in Lakewood Ranch, Florida. There's my plug again. Um... When we first got into this, a large majority of our client base, our students, our customers, were female. 
I think there's more today. I think there's still more females buying guns than males. Um, guys, we got to so. up. We got to even this out. Um, so we saw there was a need for female instructors and a class designed just for females. So listen, when we get back, we're going to talk more about that and let Lindsay uh, talk more about her expertise in the situation. We'll <laughs> stay be back tuned. Shortly. Yeah, definitely stay tuned. Hey, welcome back to Talking Guns with Joe. I am Joe, and I am joined tonight by Lindsay Guns. And we are right now talking about women, guns, and training. Yes, that's why I'm here. That's some of my <laughs> favorite things in life. <laughs> Lindsay, you ever have one of those days where you can't drink enough water? No. That is me today. I'm this typically is a just, camel. This is crazy. Anyway, again, we were talking about when I opened up Aegis Tactical, and we did... In the beginning, that's all we did was firearms training. And again, from day one, a majority of our client base is female. So we started getting a lot of feedback early from our clients. Um, a lot of them, again, female, saying they wanted a class designed around them. Because let's face it, you have different things to consider when concealed carrying a gun and everything else. Absolutely. And, you know, it makes sense that... Females would be the larger part of the client base. Um, we are at a physical disadvantage. Uh, why would you say that? If you guys go and you see the uh, videotaped portion of this show. Okay, I'm going to sink down in my seat a little <laughs> bit. There's a size differential. There is. I mean, just right here while we're sitting here talking, I mean, I'm 6'3", 6'4", 280 plus pounds. Right. I'll use the plus generously um <laughs> a five three and a half you're five three and uh, a lot you're a lot less than half about mile. half that yes yeah <laughs> so there is a size difference here so it's kind of leveling the playing field right right that's what there. i call it's my equalizer it puts it makes me go. as big as you i don't think no, no <laughs> that's not gonna happen but but the uh, other feedback we're getting from the clients they wanted a female instructor because some of them felt in, intimidated like, it's intimidation I, is it really? I feel like a lot of women feel intimidated by male instructors. Have you seen me wear pink sneakers when I teach class? I have. How's that intimidating? I'm trying to lighten up the mood. I, w I mean, I would liken it to the car mechanic, honestly. It's, it's in the same realm. Okay. So you're afraid of your car mechanic? <laughs> no, just <laughs> no, what, like when, when they know more and they know more and they kind of puff their chest a little bit because they know you, more and then they treat you like the woman and you do. I call them the one to be alpha males. Right. If you got to brag about it, guys, guess what? You're not the alpha male. Um, but yes, I see. I've seen it before. I've taken classes. We were talking about one of those instructors earlier today, which is no longer an instructor. The NRA actually took his certification. Ooh. Good for him. We're good for the NRA. What has to happen for the NRA to take your certificate? A lot. Mm. A lot. But anyway, so the feedback <laughs> we were getting, they wanted a class designed around them. They wanted a female instructor, which, folks, I'm telling you right now, is not the easiest thing in the world to find. When I was taking my class to get certified, the instructor of that course told me how rare it is to have a female come through the course to get certified. Yes. Especially one that actually knows what they're going to do. And let's, folks, just because you know how to shoot a gun and you're good at it doesn't mean you can teach a class. Right. You got to be able to take that knowledge and pass it on. Pass it on to your clients, your students in the classroom. Uh, Lindsay, you do a great job at that. I've actually sat in on your class and watched. But that was another thing. Another one of the feedbacks, feedback that we had got was they wanted a women's only class. No men allowed. Right. Guys, I know you want to be in that class. You do have a waiting area outside the class. No, I'm only kidding. But no, we do have a waiting area outside the class. Um, but they didn't want any guys in the classroom. And let's face it, I have seen it firsthand experience. You always get the guys in the classroom, the wannabe alpha males, that are going to sit there with brag about all their experience, which is usually funny because when we get into the range, the women outshoot them. Right. And you can call every single time. But... They're in there voicing their opinion, which is, again, it's just an opinion. We all have them. But right away, they were going, well, you need a revolver. You're a female. It's less complicated. Really? I can't even tell you what that does to my brain. <laughs> I mean, we've talked about, you've done videos on this on yes. YouTube in the past, everything else. And you get some great feedback from it. If you ever go to a gun shop or anybody tells you you need a revolver because it's easier for you. 
they just insulted you. Walk away, leave. They insulted you. And not only that, what they're telling me is that they don't know how to train me to use a semi-auto. It's, it's a la- it's, it's a failure on their part. It is. As and, well. And honestly, how's the semi-automatic work? You press the trigger. Right. How's the revolver work? You press the trigger. A much heavier trigger. Yes. <laughs> now, if the revolver and like our gun consultants here, if they're gonna, it's gonna be what what fits your hand the best. We're not gonna say you need a revolver because you're a woman. Again, if you go to a gun shop and they tell you that, walk out. Yes. Hands down. Um, if you can bake them a cake, ladies, you can fire a semi-auto. Hey, <laughs> that's easy. what I say. And we get a lot. We have people coming here. Well, I can't rack the slide on the semi-automatic. And sometimes people do have physical limitations where they can't do that. That's where a revolver jumps right into play. But that's like when you're talking about being at a gun show. I had a female follow um, come up to our table at a gun show one time and told me she needs to buy a revolver. What revolvers do we have? And I asked her just out of curiosity. So why do you need a revolver? Well, as we talked about, she was told she needs one because she can't rack the gun. I taught her how to rack a gun and she bought a semi-auto. And, and what's it? Two or three minutes you told her how to rack it? Yeah. It's all about technique, our right. strength. I, mean, I love have- teaching people to do things that they didn't think they could do. Their eyes light up. She loved it. She was so excited, walked away. We have a young lady that comes in here. She's a very young, I think, 87 or 88 now. <laughs> um, she had a revolver. She couldn't press the trigger. Long story short, she has a semi-automatic now. She goes shooting every week. She loves it. It's easy for her to rack. And yes, she does have arthritis really bad in her hands. It's all technique. It is. And she took the clash. She was really, she was very... Studious, would that be the right word? She yes. paid attention. Like she paid attention. <laughs> um, and she loves it. And she is cool as can be with that. But listen, we, were, we, we got all this feedback. This is the stuff we wanted. And then we came across Lindsay Guns here. And she was able to, A, an excellent shop, but even better than that, she's able to relay all this information onto her students. Right. So you're doing a class now. You do it once a week? Saturdays at one thirty. Saturdays at one thirty, and you can give the plug this time. At Ages Tactical on yes. Lakewood Ranch. <laughs> She's working with for the concealed carry. She's doing classes here at Ages Tactical, and it gets an all-female class. Top we have a good time. Hey, you're not going to be... Again, I've seen it with the guys that are in a classroom. They're just rude. They're trying to be macho. I don't know if they're looking for a date, whatever it is. I mean, to me, that's definitely the wrong way of doing it. But you're more in a... It's, it's a more friendly... It is. It's like, it's it's relaxed. We keep it fun. We have a good time. We man bash a little bit, you know, because we can. <laughs> talk about me when you're laughing. What's some of the difference? What's the biggest questions you get? Top three questions you get. Top three. Um, which gun should they purchase for okay. concealed? That's that's a big one. Um, how to conceal? And again, what's the right answer for that one? The one that fits your hands. Yes. Uh, and like I tell them, guys can. can generally conceal bigger than women. Um, we're not going to carry something around that's going to be big and heavy and bulky. We're just not going to do it. At that point, it stays home and it's your home gun. Yeah. So <laughs> It's always good to have a home gun. It's always good to have two different... They are two different guns. Let's be honest. you have some like the Ruger LCP? No I have gun. one. I mean, I have one. I have three. I don't shoot the thing. I have it for it, a particular purpose. It works. It goes bang. If you need it in a life-threatening situation, it's going to work for you. If you need it in a dress or a skirt, it's going to work yes. for you. <laughs> I, well, again, just that one time, that was it. <laughs> and this is why we have a ladies' class. <laughs> yes. So then you can have the larger gun that's on the nightstand that's more enjoyable to take to the range. Right. So that's number one. What's the second question? Another question I get is how to carry. How to carry. Because let's be honest, women dress differently than men as well. And we are generally different in physical stature. So how do I carry concealed? That's a big question. That's a, one I have the hardest time when ladies come into the shop looking for a holster because they always look at me weird because I ask them, is that how you normally dress, whatever they're wearing that day? And they look at me. Because we have a lot of options for dress. Yes. <laughs> I mean, you could wear dresses, you could wear pants, shorts, whatever it's going to be, yoga pants, whatever, whatever right. you're wearing. Listen, ladies, all the thing I can recommend, you're going to end up with a lot of holsters. Right. And the last place I would like to see you carry, and Lindsay, you can step in here, is in the purse. I don't like to carry in the purse. I don't like to carry in a place where it's hard to get to it. Yes. And what's the first thing usually a bad guy takes? The purse. Exactly. That's why I would, if I carry the purse, let me clarify, I do not carry a purse. Only on Sundays. It's a bag. <laughs> <laughs> no. 
But yes, I don't, you're going to carry on your purse. And last resort, if you have no other way to carry the gun, yes, and your purse would be acceptable. And at that point, honestly, what I say is if you have to carry in a purse, you absolutely have to carry in a purse. Make it a crossbody purse. Yes. So it's going to be a lot harder for the bad guy to take. And there's other legal things we go over in a class. Well, I'm sure you go over that in the class as well. What would be the third question? How to have my gun around my children. Let's be honest. Bingo. Females, us ladies, we are the primary caregiver of our kids. Um, they always worry about having the kids around their guns. Yes. Um, how do you address that? <laughs> it's, it's so personal. It's based on the age of the child. It's based yes. on so many different factors, honestly. Um, you know, and like I said, you know, if, you, if you've got a child where they're hip carrying age... They end up on the other side of your carry gun. Because um, yeah, if you're right-handed now, your right hand and your right hip in my... That's your now, gun hand. That's for gun. That's for yep. personal protection. Keep everything out of the uh, way. Like you were saying, depending on the age of the child, I've always said from day one, I mean, even my child at five years old, I took him to the range just to show him what the damage a gun can do. Right. And I ran it out of the private range. We shot. We had... Well, he didn't shoot. He was digging holes, really, in, behind us. But ended up shooting... Uh, Wild melons, cantaloupes, right? And I was using a Desert Eagle 50 cal. He thought that was the coolest thing in the world because the watermelon we'd be covering the watermelon seeds from 25 yards away. <laughs> However, he was, I'd say, deathly afraid of the guns afterwards. No matter any time he saw any a picture of a gun on the table, if I had a, a magazine gun magazine laying on the table, he would come and get me because it's not supposed to be there. Right. It's supposed to be secured, even if it was a picture. That was my obje objective. Right. And then when I came back from Iraq, then all of a sudden he wanted to start shooting. And I made him sit through a firearms training class, same kind that you teach. I made him walk around the house holding a fake gun, one of the rubber training guns, the correct way for about a month. Absolutely. Muscle memory so important. Then I took him to the range. And we went all the way out to the gun club, all the way out east, had a good time, set up everything. Again, I ran to the private range, and he fired about 10 rounds, and... Now, I know I didn't need DNA on this one because every one of them was in a bullseye. <laughs> Definitely mine. Um, but after 10 rounds, he's like, okay, I'm done. Let's go home. Bored. Yes. That was one expensive trip to the gun range. Right. <laughs> uh, the next morning, he wakes up. He goes, hey, I want to try it again. Took him to the range again. Again, he's eight, nine years old at this point in time. Take him to the range again. This time, he shot a box of 50, every single one of them in the bullseye. He still has that target hanging up in his room, and I don't think he's really touched a gun ever since. Right. Uh, you take away the mystery, they get bored with it. Honestly, they'd rather play with video games. <laughs> yeah. Lindsay, we're going to have to have you on here again. Okay. Talk a little bit more about your all-ladies class, and you do a co-ed class as well. I do co-ed, yep. You don't bash all of us guys all the time. Don't mean to intimidate the guys, but sometimes I do. Some, a lot of times in the class, <laughs> the female that's in the class, is one of the females is going to be the best shot in the class. But I think we are out of time right now. We'll be back next week. We're going to have some cool things on the show. We give you hints to what's going to be on the show on our Facebook page. It's Talking Guns with Joe. And you can also check us out online at TalkingGunsWithJoe.com. Have a great night, everybody. Good night.